over the glue. Belot. <laughs> Better. Good morning, Petron. No, no, sit, sit, sit. Finish the game. Your customers? No. Where are they all? I think they must be sleeping off their New Year parties. <laughs> Belot. Oh, no. Turn up the fire. It's cold in here. The uh, point. Come in here. Shut the door. I see they got snow in the north. Mm -hmm. We're in business. Inspector Maker, you fill in the form? I'll get you one. We're rather a hurry. So are we. No, we're not, Luca. What does he want? I want you, Inspector. Well, here I am. All right, Luca. The point. Get the fill that in for me. That's wrong. I'm in a hurry because I have to go to work. Mm -hmm. I said I was going to the dentist. It'll be half an hour late. Mm -hmm. Well, let's begin with your name. Xavier Martin. Xavier Martin. I follow all your cases in the paper. Mm -hmm. Yes, too. <coughs> I, I consider myself the uncrowned king of the model railway world. Hmm. I'm not mad. Oh. Well, why have you come to see me? I went to a doctor about it and he says I'm not mad. You thought you might be? I wasn't sure. So I went to Dr. Steiner, the neurologist. Uh -huh. Plus, don't fear Rochereau. Plus, don't fear Rochereau. His examination lasts an hour. Mm -hmm. He says I'm perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to start. Your address? 17, Avenue de Châtillon. Avenue de Châtillon. And I work at the Grand Magasin du Louvre, head salesman in the toy department. But my real work is with the electric trains. Oh, yeah. I don't know whether you saw our window display at Christmas. The Gare Saint-Lazare, complete in every detail. Oh. I think my wife wants to murder me. Mm. You'd be surprised at some of the people who buy electric trains. Your wife's? I make no accusations, mind you. Simply that she wants to murder you? Yes. Been married 15 years, hardly ever a quarrel. Perfectly happy. Except that she wants to murder you. Yes. Why? Perhaps she's mad. I mean, I'm not. The doctor says so. One partner in every marriage doesn't have to be mad. Uh, Dr. Steiner says he'd like to see her too, but how can I ask Jenny to go to a neurologist? Her name is Jenny, huh? No, Giselle. Jenny's her sister. She lives with us. Did I say Jenny? I meant Giselle. I presume you have some basis for your suspicions? Oh, yes. <coughs> Your analysts will tell you it is zinc phosphide. Well, yours having told you that already? Mm, a friend at the store. He's an amateur chemist. He has quite a little laboratory at home, just mm -hmm. as I have a railway layout. That was how it happened, really. I knocked over a pot of glue, went to look for a rag. Under all the other cleaning things, there was a jar full of this. Mm -hmm. Well, what else could she want it for? It's highly poisonous. I looked it up. What are its uses? It has one or two industrial uses, and it was once used in minute doses as a medicine. There were 50 grams in that jar. Mm. Well, what could she possibly want it for? Have you asked her? Well, no. I mean, what could I say? What could she say? Mm. But there's no real need to. 
For the last few months, I've been having pains. Here. Oh? Never before. That's all. They want the land here filed back in a hurry. Ah, the public prosecutor. Hmm? I've got his secretary on the phone now. Mm-hmm. One moment, monsieur. Well, my fault. These things happen. I'm overworked. Right? Make sure it's over here. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Well, you better sign it up in the registry or else I'll get the blame. <laughs> get this down the registry right away, will you? Uh, no point. Where's he gone? Have you seen him? He just went out, said good morning to me as he went past. I thought you'd finished with him. Huh. Shall I go after him? Yeah. No, no. No, if he, uh, if he doesn't want to talk to me, I don't want to talk to him. Hmm. Yeah. Can get a glass of beer? No, it's too cold. Grog? Good idea. Shall I send down for it? No, it's always tepid by the time it arrives. I'll go over to the brasserie. Right. We'll both go over. You'll need a coat? Oh, I'll be all right. You will not be all right. You'll catch a cold, and then someone else will have to do your job. That's wrong. Huh? Someone else to see you. Ah, there would be. Madame Xavier Martin. Hmm. Sure in. What shall I do, Petrol? Go and have that grog, but don't be too long about it. Right. Will you come this way, madame? Well, I expect you know why I'm here. Mm hmm. And my husband has just been to see you. Did he tell you, sir? No, I saw him come in here. You followed him? Yes. You may smoke if you want to. Oh, thank you. I smoke far too much. I ought to give it up, really. I don't mind a pipe if we really want one. You must think it odd, two of us coming here together, as if we were going to confession. It is rather like that, really. Do you know what your husband said to me? That I'm trying to poison him. Are you? No, of course not. I know why he thinks so. I know him very well. I've known him for 15 years. He was a peasant brought up by foster parents on a farm. He's worked his way up from nothing to the position he holds today. He really is an acknowledged expert on electric trains. I hope you didn't laugh when he told you that. Well, after all, nobody makes fun of people who design corsets and brassieres. Do you have something to do with those? <laughs> well, what woman hasn't? As a matter of fact, I sell them. But about Xavier, he really does work terribly hard, and over Christmas his job seems to get on top of him. He feels inadequate. Lately, he's begun to worry about some of his assistants being after his position. Mm, are they? No, of course not. I told him he was becoming neurotic, but I didn't realize how bad he was until he started suspecting me. Did he tell you of his suspicions? Oh, as good as. He looked at me the other day and said, you'd make a beautiful widow, wouldn't you? Well, he keeps harping on it about the wonderful career I'd have without him. He changes his cup for mine. Makes me eat the first mouthful of food. Keeps hunting round the kitchen. And he says, the doctor says he isn't mad. Dr. Steiner? Yes, he went to see him a few days ago. Came back looking very pleased with himself. Oh, and he said, whatever you do, someone will know all about it. And that's you. Mm -hmm. Well, why have you come to see me? Do you want him certified? No, certainly not. Mm. Well, I must get to work. You're not in the same shop as he is? Oh, no. I work at Maison Harris at the Rue Saint Honoré. Oh, Maison Harris. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best lingerie shops in Paris. Mm. You have any staff, on you? No, there's only me. I work directly under Monsieur Harris. His real name is Swab. He gives me a percentage of the profits. So you do quite well? Mm, not bad. Do you have a maid at home? Why? You must be out all day. Oh, my sister looks after the house. She's been living with us since her husband died. Her name? Jenny. Mm. Do you love your husband? Or would I be here if I didn't? Where'd you meet him? At the shop. Uh, his or yours? His, of course. Mm -hmm. I used to work there when I first came to Paris. You came from? Rouen. Alone? Oh, what a question, yes. Mm -hmm. well, as a matter of fact, I did live with a young lawyer for some time, but, um, well, didn't work out. Do you make more money than your husband? Yes, now. Does he mind? Oh, he's used to it. We live a quiet life. Mm. I see. And you're not prepared to uh, sign a formal application to have him examined by a mental specialist? No, certainly not. Well, that's all. 
Do you use zinc phosphide? Yes. What for? Rats. At home? No, at the shop. The rule St. Honoré is an old street and they've mm. become a plague. Oh, I did take some home once because we had some in our backyard. Is that it? Is that what's worrying him? Oh, how silly. You never told him? Oh, I don't know. I may have. Anyway, this explains it all. I'll tell him tonight. Oh, no, then you'll know I've been to see you. Which you also don't propose to tell him? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know anything anymore. I came here to ask for help, and all you do is ask me questions as though I were a suspect. If you were a suspect, you wouldn't be going now. Good morning, madame. You go, La Pointe. Find me Dr. Steiner, Place d'Enfer au Chirou. Call him, put the call through to me. Mm -hmm. Back off. Who smells of rum? <laughs> me, Petron. You said I could. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, we have a crime to solve. I can't tell you much about it because, in fact, there is no crime. No crime, no motive, no criminal, no victim. A murder case? Mm. Poisoning. Have that analysed. If it turns out to be bicarbonate, we'd look even sillier than I feel. <laughs> now, La Pointe. I want you to go down to Maison Aris in the Rue Saint Honore. Watch Madame at work. She didn't see you here, did she? No. Good. Now, when you get there, try not to look like a policeman. Ask to see something. Hmm? Well, it's a woman's shop. I mean, uh, underwear, that kind of thing. Well, oh, pretend you're buying a nitrous for your fiance or something. I don't think one would. I mean, it's uh, a little personal, isn't it? Well, for yourself, then, I don't care. <laughs> anyway, don't look like a policeman. Right. Keep your mind on your work. Luca, you can take that grin off your face and go down to the. 17 Avenue de Chatillon. Try to sell some life insurance to Madame Jenny, something or other. Find out her name, I know about it. Why insurance, Petron? Because I want to know if they have any already. For a lady. I, I mean a young lady. Uh, please, sit, monsieur. Thank you. Uh, what is mademoiselle's size? Oh, um, well, she's, she's a bit shorter than you, and perhaps a little less broad across the, uh, the shoulders. I, I mean, not that you're too... Well, perhaps she's a bit narrow, really. Well, the shoulders hardly matter, monsieur. This is the model we designed for Princess Helen of Greece. Um, it looks a little short. Mademoiselle is hardly likely to be wearing shoes, will it? No, I suppose not. How much? 450 francs. 400 and... Oh. Well, you haven't anything a little less exotic, have you? In, in nylon, perhaps? No nylon here, monsieur. Only pure silk and batiste. This is the least expensive thing we have in the shop, monsieur. 180 francs. Oh. Um, well, I think perhaps not a nightdress, after all. Something else. What, monsieur? One of those. Fifty francs, monsieur. Which is Monsieur Martin's house, can you tell me? Over there, monsieur, number 17. Ah, oh, thanks. Do you know him? Well, we've, uh, we've done some business together. Mm, more than I have. He never comes in here. Doesn't drink. <laughs> Right, thank you. Ah, Madame Martin? Yeah, that's my sister. She's out. Oh, my apologies, Madame. She and her husband both work. I look after the house. Can I help you? Well, a colleague of Monsieur Martin suggested he might be interested in some insurance. Oh, well, come in. It's cold out. Thank you. Ah, snow on the way. You're from an insurance company? Yes. I don't suppose I can interest you? Oh, no, thank you. I have a pension from my husband's firm. He was killed in an accident. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me working. I have to get lunch. Uh, they come back for lunch? Xavier does, not Giselle. 
She prefers the Grand Boulevard. If you like to wait, he'll be here soon. Yes, well, I don't think I'll wait now, but I would like to interest him in our new road accident policy. You see, if he comes home for lunch every day, he runs an extra 24% risk of death or mutilation by road accident. However, I'll come back this evening. Why shouldn't you have to make a special journey? I happen to know they're both insured already. Ah, well, sometimes that little extra cover makes all the difference between anxiety and contentment. Oh, their policies are quite a lot. 10,000 each. 10,000. Against accident? And death. I see. Well, in that case, madame, thank you for your patience. You might try the flats next door. I might indeed. It seems a pity to come all this way for nothing on a cold day like this. <laughs> yes, it does. Well, thank you, madame. Oh, Goodbye. It's just as cold in here. Snow coming. <clears throat> well, it's the time of year for it. As long as it doesn't stop the Reim Dijon match. Cover it off, please. Monsieur. Who'll win? Reim. And the beat Lyon. Are you going to it? Going on a supporter's bus. Fifty francs. The cashier won't stand for that. <sighs> okay. Oh, yes, thank you. The analysts say it is zinc phosphate. Go on. Ah. Well, uh, after that, I left the shop rather quickly. As a matter of mm. fact, I left my hat there. You just wanted an excuse to go back. Oh, well, we may have to. Well, what did you think of them? Well, I wouldn't swear to anything, but they make a good pair. Mm. They don't have to speak to understand each other. They had lunch together in a restaurant on the Boulevard des Capucines. Just as her sister said she would. What was the sister's name, by the way? Jenny Sorel, according to the barman at the bistro. Mm -hmm. Now, you say that she opened the door to Xavier and he kissed her. Oh, well, there was nothing to it, just as a man might kiss his sister. Yes, she is. Oh, no, his wife's sister. Yes, well, I mean, there's and no... you're going to say it's the same thing, and he's not. Well, I see, they spent all day doing nothing and getting nowhere. Let's all go have a drink and go home. Yeah, and you have to say those words. <laughs> Mickey! Hmm? Oh, he is? All right, bring him in. My friend is back again. Xavier? Yes, to see me. Now, Lapointe, I want you in there with the door ajar. I want this interview taken down. Right, that's I have someone downstairs, ready to follow him when he leaves. Come in. Oh, do forgive me for coming so late. I couldn't get away earlier. Ah. Oh. Will you take your coat off? Uh, oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, perhaps I will. I'm a bit hot. I've been running. Uh. Ah. Sorry about this morning. They're strict at the shop. I was afraid I might be late. I'd have rung you up early. We're not allowed to make private calls. It's... Uh, oh, I think I'm getting a cold. My wife's been to see you, hasn't she? Yes. What did she say? Here, Monsieur Martin, we ask the questions. I'm sorry. Are you lodging a complaint against your wife? No, what good would that do? Where's my proof? You don't believe a word I say, do I you? I wish you'd stop asking questions. Well, it's no use my answering them if you're not going to believe me. I don't suppose you've even analysed that powder. Yes, we have. Zinc phosphide. Rat poison. Which she brought home from the shop because I complained about rats. Absolutely true. But that doesn't make any difference. Why did why didn't she tell me she brought it back? Perhaps she forgot. Oh, she said I'll never forget anything. No, mind you, I can see it's awkward for you. I might be lying. She might be lying. We both might be lying. We all might, indeed. This business of my going to a neurologist of my own accord is it's hardly the act of an entirely sane man. Or am I just trying to create an impression of neurosis? It's so hard for you to know. Well, make it easier. And she must have told you all about how neurotic I am. How I suspect the assistance at the store and all that sort of thing. Do you? Yes, and rightly too. Oh, and I do more than that. When I can't find something at home, I stamp my feet and burst into tears. Often. Did you tell Dr. Steiner that? Of course, I told him everything. He asked me questions you'd never dream of. Well? And I'm still not mad. But still convinced that your wife wants to murder you. Utterly. And you don't want an inquiry? <laughs> Useless. Or protection. How would you do that? Hide in the teapot. Hide in the... Do you drink tea? No. 
So why should I hide in the teapot? You couldn't. But why a teapot? Because we drink a tisane at night. An infusion of Chinese anise. You, you make it in a teapot. Mm. I think that's where the poison will be. Well, if you don't want us to do anything about it, would you mind telling me why you came here in the first place? So that you'll know. So that if anything happens to me, you won't think that it was an accident or natural causes. Very obliging, monsieur. I, I shall be more obliging than that. I'm going to save you a trial. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. shall mete out justice myself. Meaning that you're proposing to kill your wife in advance? Yes. After I'm poisoned, but before I die. You see... There are very few poisons that cause instant death, certainly not zinc phosphide, though I don't suppose she'll use that now. I have a loaded revolver at home. Licensed? Uh, yes, ask at the town hall. Giselle knows I've got it, but she doesn't know where I keep it. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment I feel I've been poisoned, and I shall know, I will shoot my wife through the heart. Mm. Uh, sit down a minute, will you? Yes. Okay. Patron, she's out here waiting for him. Who, the wife? No, Jenny, the other one. Uh, don't talk so loud. You're, you're making the uh, speaker vi vibrate. She didn't come with him. She must have followed him when he left the shop. Shall I tell them when he, he comes out? Yes, do then. My wife. No, oh, no. Hmm. Wonder if that's the truth. I shouldn't think so. It's funny. I can't believe a word you say. And you won't believe a word I say. Would you agree to another examination? By a neurologist? Yeah. Our old man is very good. When, now? No, it's too late now. In, uh, tomorrow morning? If I have time to tell them at the store. Uh, we'd ask for your signature to a paper stating that it's of your own free will. If you want me to. Yes, why not? After all, you came here of your own free will. You don't even have to answer my questions. Will you? Will you believe the answers? I'll try. <laughs> Do you love your wife? No. Did you ever love her? I thought I did. Do you mind explaining just what you mean by that? No, not at all. You see, there was very little time for company when I was a young man. Mm -hmm. There was so much reading to be done if I was to better myself. So that you really had nothing to do with women until you met your wife? Only what you can imagine, more disgust than pleasure. Mm -hmm. Well, when I met Giselle, I saw her as the ideal woman. Mm -hmm. And that was what I loved. The word couple. A marvellous, marvellous feeling for me in those days to be one of the halves of a couple. It was what I dreamed of. Did she love you? I thought she did, for a time. Mm -hmm. When did you finally decide that you'd made a mistake? About two years ago. Just about the time that your sister-in-law came to visit you. That's so. Why should her arrival change your mind? Well, until she came, I had no standards of comparison. Mm -hmm. Go on. Well, I, I wasn't always happy at home, but I... I told myself I was as happy as anyone else, that Giselle was a woman and that all women were like that. Like what? Greedy, selfish, false, cold. Oh, I persuaded myself that women who weren't were just putting on an act. You see, like everyone else, I'd always dreamed of a certain kind of love, of union, fusion. <laughs> but I decided it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So what have you against your wife? This is really in very bad taste, isn't it? <laughs> Still, never mind. I don't want you to draw the wrong conclusions. Giselle's eye has always been on the next rung of the ladder. First on the young man who was to bring her from Rouen to Paris. And then when she found life difficult as a single girl, she decided to become a married woman. Now she'd like to be a rich widow. I suppose you know all about the 10,000 insurance mm -hmm. and about Monsieur Schwab at Harris's. He's her lover. Are you sure? I followed them to a hotel one afternoon, three hours. But you never asked for a divorce. And uh, all this situation existed before your sister-in-law came to visit you? Yeah. I, but my eyes weren't open. What opened them? The knowledge that there are women of the kind I'd always dreamed of. Mm -hmm. Do you love your sister-in-law? Yes. Is she your mistress? No. Does she love you? I think she will. Not yet? She loved her husband. They were a real couple. When he died, she tried to kill herself. Huh. Gas. They found her just in time. When she first came to us, she, she was still in full mourning. Giselle laughs at her, tells her she ought to get out and enjoy herself. 
I've been trying to give her back a taste for life. Mm. Have you succeeded? I think perhaps I, I am succeeding. Uh -huh. Do you see now why she isn't my mistress? I love her and respect her. Does she know about you and your wife? No. Mm. Well, I, I, I've never told her. And Giselle and I never quarrel. This insurance policy, it's a joint one? Yes. So that you have as much interest in your wife's death as she has in yours. More? Because you love your sister-in-law. Exactly. Mm. Did you know that she was waiting for you downstairs? Oh, no, she shouldn't have come here. Did you know you were coming here? No, of course she didn't. I must go. You have nothing else to tell me? No, nothing. Mm -hmm. 11 o'clock tomorrow, then? What, for the examination? Mm. Yes, all right. But I'm not mad, you know. Good night. What an interview. Mm. Do you want all this typed? No, not yet. Let's hope we never need it. What did you think? <coughs> I think he was lying at the end. Ah, when she said that, uh, when he said that she wasn't in the know. Yeah. Mm. I wonder. You're late. Mm. Busy? Well, no. I don't know. In, 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 In Adler's opinion, the starting point of neurosis is an alarming feeling of inferiority and insecurity. A defensive reaction against this feeling leads the patient to identify himself with an imaginary ideal. What do you think? Oh, I really couldn't say. Then can I. I suppose Freud has another opinion, and Jung another. Which shall I hold? Well, why don't you have an imperative? And then I'll bring the dinner in. Good idea. We'll both have aperitifs. For a change. A couple of aperitifs. A couple. When did you first take my arm? Your arm? Hmm. Walking along as though we belonged to each other. When? Why oh, don't you remember? Oh, yes, I remember. I remember exactly. We've known each other for three months. Well, the week before you kissed me, and after that you kissed me every night at the same place. Mm -hmm. One Tuesday night you took me to the Opera Comique. They were doing Carmen. <laughs> I wore a blue taffeta dress. On the way to the car, you didn't hold me, and you only gave me your hand to help me into the taxi. Mm -hmm. After the theatre, you asked me if I was hungry. We walked towards the Grand Boulevard to find somewhere to eat, and I pretended to stumble because my heels were so high. And I put my hand in your arm. I felt I'd been so bold I began to tremble. But you were very sensible and pretended not to notice anything. Hmm. <laughs> when was the next time? When we came out of the restaurant, I did it without thinking. I've done it ever since. It became a habit? Yes. Hmm. But a very nice one. I'll go and get the dinner. Hmm. Excellent coffee, my dear. Jenny made it. <coughs> ah, very good. More? No, thank you. The pitcher only makes one journey to the well at a time. I've eaten well today. Mm, so have I. What about you, Jenny? Yes, thank you. Did you lunch here? Mm -hmm. Oh, you ought to go out more. There's no point in hanging around the house when there's nothing to keep you. You'll never find a man in this place. I suppose you lunched somewhere on the boulevard. Yes, at Vasquez. No shortage of men on the boulevard. No shortage of men anywhere. Shall we clear? 
Are you going on playing trains? I'm working on the modification of one of the German models to enable it to be run on our lines. Oh, hardly patriotic. Oh, but it's reversible. We'll be able to sell ours to them. The patent will be valuable. To us? To the firm. Oh. Well, it's fair. I couldn't afford to do the work without their equipment. And besides, it all helps your position. Ah, oh, exactly. Yes, that's the point. I'm expected to be creative, not just a hack worker. Jenny, would you bring the glasses? I want to do them first. Coming. Well, there it is. There's nothing to go on, really. The public prosecutor certainly won't back us up over this, but I, I just feel uneasy all night if someone isn't watching that house. We better split the watch. You do the first half, huh? Well, you're older than I am. All right, Sonny, relieve me at two. What are we watching for? Anyone leaving, singly or otherwise. Sounds of quarrelling, anything unusual. If we hear anything, do we go in? No, telephone me. I'll be at home. And if anyone comes out, do we stop them? No, follow them and again, phone me. My pension's safer than yours. Mm -hmm. I wish I hadn't told Mark Thorne that his wife had been here. So, we can only wait. Good night. Good night, Good night Patron. Patron. I hope I don't hear from you. Sir no. What? I can't work with you making a row like that. I can't work without making it. Work? Yes, work. We? The firm. You and him. And you. After all, I pay my share here, don't I? Yes. So you said yourself that yours would only profit your firm's shop. So I think mine has priority. Don't you, Jenny? I don't know. Oh, you must have some opinion. No. Oh, you're getting dull, my dear. You want to go out more, like you did this evening. Yes. Jenny went out for a walk this evening. Her coat was wet. Didn't you know? You could almost watch from here. Not after a few of these. Where will you wait? There's a small yard round the side. You can see the main room, the two bedrooms, and the bathroom upstairs from there. That's where you'll find me. They are here. Right. What time do you shut? When I like. Are you police? Yeah. I thought you were earlier. Is it uh, Matto? At the moment, it's nobody. See it too. Right. <coughs> well, it's time for artisan, Jenny. I'll make it. We mustn't keep Xavier out of his bed. That would never do, would it? You like your sleep, don't you? I get tired. <laughs> well, what it is that makes you tired? Life? Love? What? Work. <laughs> oh, your trains. Where are my spectacles? I don't know. Did I leave them in the kitchen? Yes, I think I did. Well, Jenny would know, I dare say. <laughs> cigarettes in the kitchen by the cupboard would you fetch them you might say please she's my sister you don't have to be polite in family life so of course you'd hardly know would you your tisan it's all right you supervise the making of it don't you yes that is Cigarette? No, thanks. Jenny? No. Mm, 
fun it is. What do you think, Xavier? As usual. Jenny, shall I pour you out some more? <laughs> no, no, this suits me very well. You know I feel awful about this. You ought to have my room. I should sleep down here. I don't think that's the way it should be at all. It can be no other way. Jenny, my darling, it will. It will. It will. Sleep. You better go and get a grub. You need it. Right. Anything happened? Ah, they're all asleep. Lights are all out. No, they're not. Something's happening. The bathroom. If anyone looks out. Yeah. Lucas telephoning for him. Poison? Yes, madam. Poison. You go upstairs and dress, you'll be coming to headquarters.
You too, madam. Go up and dress. Oh, love me. Love me. What happened? Well, the lights went on. Down here first, then upstairs, Madame Martin's room. For a long time, nothing happened. Then she came out. She was going to telephone, she said. Well, I came in, got a man off his beat to call you and Luca, and held him here. Are we questioning them? No. No. The sister-in-law cries all the time. The wife looks at his body as if it were a rug. Mm. Inspector McRae will see you now, madame. Uh, no, Madame Maton. Oh, uh, will you wait here, please? Madame Maton, will you come this way, please? Coffee? Oh, I'm dying for some. Your husband is dead. You think I killed him, don't you? Tell me what happened. What do you want to know? Everything. What time did you come in yesterday evening? Eight o'clock. I was last home. We had dinner. What did you eat? Ham, salad, pears, cheese, coffee. Mm -hmm. Did you notice anything unusual? My sister had been out. Her coat was wet. Who did the washing up? I did the glasses. She did the plates and so on? Yes, it's her way of playing her share. Once I'd started her off, I came back into the sitting room and got on with my book. What are you reading? My order book. Xavier was playing about with his trains, as usual, making a fearful noise. Jenny came in, she read for a bit. And she went out into the kitchen, and Xavier followed her. Why? Oh, he followed her everywhere, like a dog. Was he her lover? I shouldn't think so. Go on. And Xavier came back, and Jenny, with the three cups of tisane, she put them down in front of me. What was your husband doing? Or playing with his trains, as usual. With his back turned to you? Yes. Hmm. And Jenny went into the kitchen to get my cigarettes. And I changed my cup for Xavier's. You did what? Well, change cups. Well, I often did. I never knew what he might get up to. But yesterday morning, you utterly refused to have him certified. Well, he was alive then. Oh. And your insurance policy is invalid in the case of insanity. Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. So I wouldn't want him certified. No, yeah, you'd want him. Oh, never mind. You changed cups and then? Drank, said goodnight, went to bed. You drank his and he drank yours? Yes. Do you know who went to the bathroom at 12.15? I did. To be sick, I'd been poisoned. You'd been poisoned? Yes, I woke up feeling dreadful, so I went to the bathroom and put a finger down my throat. After drinking from his cup? Yes. Has your sister complained of sickness? No. And she drank all her tisane? Yes, every drop. Have you anything else to tell me? I saw him die. You saw him die? Tell me about it. Well, I heard him, actually. It was after I'd gone to bed. I heard him moaning and thrashing about. Then I heard a loud thump, so I came down. There he was, lying on the floor. Trying to reach the pistol. I think he meant to come and shoot me, but the poison overcame him. And what, did, and what did you do? Nothing. He was trying to reach for the gun and mouthing things at me, but he couldn't really speak. And he gave a sort of moan, went rigid, died. And then? Well, I had to think things out. I knew what you might say. In the end, I decided to go for help and found your detective on the doorstep. Where was your sister? In her room. All the time? Yes. 
He made an awful noise. She must have heard. Yes. You did not love your husband? No. I quite liked him. Do you love Monsieur Aris? Oh, you keep using that word. It doesn't mean anything. We get on together. But you never thought of getting a divorce to marry him? Of course not. He's got a rich wife. We need her money in the business. Mm. So no divorce. Did you ever think of killing your husband? If I had, I wouldn't be here now. You might have been. Unfortunately, you didn't kill him. You come. Stay with madame for a moment. I may need a word with her later. Uh, will you come this way, madame, please? You come in here. You want to tell someone, don't you? I don't know what to say, what to do. I don't even know what happened. Do you know what you did? Tell me. Or do you want a lawyer? What would be the use? I'll help you. First, you meant to poison your sister. Oh. Yes. Because you were in love with her husband. <laughs> because she was trying to drive him mad. He was mad when he was with her. Only with me was he all right. When he met you outside here, yesterday evening, did he tell you that he was coming in for an examination in the morning? Yes. It frightened him. He felt she'd won. You mean he thought we wouldn't let him go? Well, would you have? No, I don't think we would. No, that meant that he only had one evening left in which to deal with her the way he thought out. Tell me, last evening, when Xavier came into the kitchen, their tea was already in the cups, hmm? yeah. And then? He went to the drawer where the knives were kept. Mm. I had my back to him. He made a clatter as if he was looking for something. Then he went out without a word. So you took the poison bottle? I felt sure he was going to be put away. But you put a good dose into her cup, making sure that it was on her side of the tray. Oh. Did you? <laughs> yes. Oh, if you knew what a night I've had. You heard everything upstairs? Huh? Everything. But you didn't come down? I was too frightened. Yes. That's what made me sure that you had done it. But how did it happen? Xavier should have told you everything that was in his poor breaking mind. You see, he'd planned to shoot his wife if ever he was sure that he'd been poisoned. He made sure that I knew of this. Then last night, he put some poison into his own cup. Not much, just enough to make him ill, enough to give him the excuse that he needed. After all, the poison would be diagnosed. He had warned us that she would do it. She'd be dead and couldn't contradict him. Might even have worked. Her sister hadn't changed the cups. She... Yeah, she changed them over. So he got the one. She got the one that he meant for himself. And he got the one that you meant for her. Oh, God. Oh, God. I killed him. 
Stay with her for a moment. You may go. Oh, you don't want me anymore? You will be wanted, madame. Thank heaven, not by me. And Giselle goes free. Mm. Unfortunately, Luca, we can only arrest people for what they do, not for what they are. 